Grazie. Buongiorno. Um, hello, everybody. I think uh, I will do this. I will do this in English. Um, and this morning, um, I've got a question for you. Actually, do you want to build a new school? This is my question. Um, okay. Let's say your answer is yes to this uh, question. Um, if you have to build a new school from scratch, what would you do? You still have classrooms? Do you still have teachers? Do you still group students with the same age in the same class? Do you use books or do, will you use MOOCs? That's among a lot of possibilities. One thing for sure is that education is really a fundamental tool for the upcoming society and, I hope, for a more positive society. But right now, we've got a problem. There is actually a problem between education and a problem between the society in general. I'm coming from France, and we have a huge issue there. I'm not for sure in Italy, but I guess there is still this heartbreaking uh, between education and what you can see at home and what the business needs in the industry. Two examples. In education, usually, you have children and then students that follow exactly the same path. Actually, we are quite cloning human beings at the end of the public education system. And also, it's promoting a lot of individualism. And that's exactly what does not want the industry. Industry wants collaborative work. And collabor collaborative work at school, it's called cheating. And that's very bad. Industry uh, also don't want people that are all the same, that are clones. No, industry needs diversity to have more innovation and to be able to have new projects, new project, products, and new projects. Sorry. Another issue is uh, right now uh, the IT integration at school. We all have this kind of problem, I guess, in all Europe and a lot of um, accidental uh, countries. At home, when you have a question, you have someone in the family that just take his smartphone, try to Google the question, give some hints, some part of answers, and then we can debate on that. But right now, all this knowledge that is available online is not available in the classroom. We are really out of sync, and it's quite a pity because actually there are a lot of solutions, there are a lot of experiments that exist for a long time and that proved their efficiency. Do you know Mr. Sugata Mitra? He is a software engineer in India, and he realized an experiment he called the hole in the wall. He literally embedded computers in walls and let children in a slum in suburb of New Delhi, he let children use his computer completely freely. And he take a care look of what was happening and after a few days, children were able to use the computer. After a few weeks, children were able to browse and after a few months, children who have learned English. That was not their native language. And it was a very uh, famous and exciting uh, experiment, and without any teacher, without any school constraints. Sugata Mitra did a very nice TED talk a few years ago. If you have not seen it, just go and Google it, you'll see the TED Talk of Sugata Mitra. And actually, I show this video to my two kids. And my two kids were really amazed. Hey, we can really learn that way. And I said to them, 
guess what? You already learned that way. But maybe not at school. When they come back from school after each day, just like I guess every parent, I ask them, how was your day? Here is the answer. And this is what I qualify as a good mood. But if I ask my children, I've got a problem. Can you create for me an alarm system that will detect the bad guys in Minecraft? Guess what answer I got? I have this enthusiast for my children, and also I had not just one solution, but two or three different solutions. I used to be a software programmer, and um, while they show me the solutions, I recognize some patterns, some specific models that are really close to software programming. And that's, I thought, that's when I thought that actually my children did really learn something very useful and interesting. It was a such uh, high enough degree of complexity, and it was really interesting. And they learned that completely alone. They browsed uh, online to search for information. They uh, go to chat and forums and so on. It was completely natural for my kids. What about then? Keeping this natural way of learning that I have uh, experimented Sugata Mitra and just like experimented my kids, if we can bring that to school. Actually, Mr. Sugata Mitra did not stop after this experiment. It was 15 years ago. And more recently, he created what he called the self-organized learning environment. S-O-L-E. It's an experiment that now takes place in UK, in a small classroom, primary school, uh, as far as I remember, in UK. And actually, there are a lot of other experiments that use this kind of pedagogy. Here I come in the picture. I'm the pedagogical director of 42. 42, it's the name of an information technology school in France, in Paris. It's a school that is completely free for students, and it's a school where we uh, have no previous requirement, academic requirement, to, uh, to get in. And we are doing what we call peer learning. We used four principles to build this pedagogy, and actually it's exactly the same that have been used by Sugata Mitra or what happened with my kids when they were learning all this Minecraft stuff. The first principle is to make sense. Make sense for my kids means passion. Passion for Pokemon, for Harry Potter, for Minecraft. For children in suburbs in India, it was the curiosity of what the hell is this computer, this sort of, uh, I don't know, this thing embedded in the world. For my students at School 42, it's a way of life. My students are completely geek, and they just love sitting in front of a computer for hours developing software. Actually, for all these children and all these students, it's more like a game. And that's one of the Further development at School 42 is to introduce more game in the scholarship. What about school? I guess here we have found a new role for teachers. Not all the children at the same time have the same curiosity for the same things. It's up to the teacher to choose wisely. It's up to the teacher to make some teasing and up to the teacher to make some animation around topics that will uh, put together the maximum amount of children. My second point is knowledge access. Right now, we are, in, we are in the society of knowledge. Give a computer, an internet access, 
and you can access to Wikipedia, you can access to a lot of information online. But wait, it's not because you can browse and use Wikipedia on your smartphone that you are suddenly more clever. No. You have to seek for the right knowledge, you have to use it, you have to practice it to actually become more clever. And that's my third point. We need to leave learners alone. No more lecture. It's over. Why spend time to transfer knowledge from a teacher to students when students can seek for a high level of knowledge online? Actually, teachers need to create the condition to have groups, collaborative works, to have debates between students. And this is what we call peer learning, because students are between themselves debating, chatting, exchanging ideas, trying, testing, and all of this must be practiced. You have to practice, you have to produce something to use this knowledge and then to actually learn it correctly. This leads to self-organization, this leads to curiosity, this leads to uh, uh, innovation, this leads also to uh, more uh, accurate relationships, and uh, the thing that leads to uh, more uh, valuable skills for the actual and the upcoming society. My last point here is positive feedback. This is actually very important. You need to encourage your students or your children. You need to give awards. You need to keep motivation and curiosity, because this is what uh, this is the fuel for the first uh, principle, which is making sense. And the big uh, trouble here is to avoid the stigmatization of failure. If you fail, especially in France, this is very bad. Actually, it's not quite the same in the UK or uh, in the US. When you fail, you just try again, and this is part of the culture. In France, we have this huge problem of stigmatization failure. We must avoid that. We must say to our children and to our students, OK, you fail, try another time. Because all the children are different. Children don't need the same amount of time to learn the same thing. In the picture, one thing is missing. What about evaluation? Evaluation still remains important for two reasons. Because when you are on your, in your real life and not in your scholarship, um, you still have evaluation from people around you, from your customer when you are in your business, your company. Then it's important to have this. And also in the school, evaluation is important because you need to adapt your curriculum. You need to move some deadlines, you maybe change slightly, slightly some topics. So it's important to have a kind of evaluation. It's still work in progress at School 42, but we are right now using peer correcting. It means that each student will uh, rate 10 other students in the community. And each student will receive 10 different rates and grades from uh, other students from the community. We made some tests uh, in the background, running some uh, automatic uh, correction uh, programs, software, uh, and we had pretty accurate results with peer correcting, actually. So here are the four principles that we used for our uh, uh, school uh, fortitude. If you're not still convinced, just ask yourself, how did you learn to walk? How did you learn to talk? Did you have lecture? No, usually you had encouragement from your parents. When you fall down, you don't have a blame, you are not blamed by your parents, you don't have a bad grade, a bad rating. No, you fail and you just keep trying. So while you see, you have a 
available knowledge because you see your parents walking every day and because you see your parents chatting and talking every day. You just all learn already through these four principles, actually. So, I guess it's now time to turn this, this poor, boring board school, uh, board uh, boy, into uh, more uh, fun, more game, more uh, accurate school, uh, pedagogy that fits the actual society, but also a pedagogy that fits into the upcoming society, because the children have learned to uh, the relationships, because the children have learned a kind of agility uh, in their way of learning, that they will apply this agility uh, and adaptability uh, in their life. So, do you want to build a new school? Actually, I did. I hope you uh, will be able to help too, or at least to spread the message that it's now time to go full scale and to really change education in all of our countries. Thank you very much. Grazie.